Hello, good morning. You are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you. Kindly remember to share these messages. Remember to like, press the like button. And remember to uh, comment as you deem fit. Above all, please subscribe to our channel so that you will be profiting from the messages that the Lord God Almighty has sent to you from us. And please remember to share it extensively. God bless you. This morning, we'll be examining our new self. That's the topic. Or your new self, or your new nature, or your old, your new nature. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we worship you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for a good night's sleep. Thank you for waking us up hell and hearty today. Thank you because you are giving us a new page upon which to write something good, something wonderful, something that glorifies your holy name. And we also are in your presence this morning to, to hear from you, for you to direct and teach us so that what we do today will be according to your will and purposes for our lives. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We magnify your holy name. You are mighty, you are powerful, you are excellent. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for enabling us to able forgive those who sin against us. Thank you, Lord, for our nation, Nigeria. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for the uh, followers, everybody. Thank you for this continent of Africa. Thank you for the entire planet Earth. You are the one regulating everything. You are only a man can make his plans, but the fruit coming to fruitfulness of it is in your hands. We thank you for all that you planned and achieved. Thank you for the ones not achieved. Thank you, Lord, for your will is what is prevailing upon our lives. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Daddy, this morning, please forgive us whatever sins are left in our, our lives. And you do forgive everyone who has offended us. Please, Lord, today, direct the affairs of our lives to more. Guide our footsteps. Let us contribute positively to uh, to getting your glory to your, you know, for your, to do things that will give you glory today in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever again we have done wrong, have mercy. Let's say it in your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. So we're going to listen to a Bible passage, Colossians chapter 3. Just a moment, please. Since then, you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body 
you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thanks, uh, Nicky Gumbel. God bless you as you read that passage to us. Now, brethren, once more, I appreciate you for visiting our channel and uh, listening to these messages. Uh, like I said, what we are looking at today is our, what our new nature should be. What our new nature should be. We are born natural. Every human being were born the same way. That is, through the passage of somebody's womb, that is our mothers. And by the time we come into the world, we didn't come with anything. And when we are going, we are not going to go with anything. Now, when we are talking of new nature, it means that there is an old nature. Every one of us were born into an old nature. Even if you are born, even if you are the children of, uh, of priests or of bishops, yes, we still have that old nature, Adamic nature in us. So when we are growing up, it is then we are being tutored to know where we are. You are either an atheist or you are a, a, a Christian or you become a Muslim or whatever other religions that you belong. And then not only that, even within each religion, you have the sections. That's why they say religious sect. For instance, in Christianity, you have the Orthodox churches you have the Protestants. The Orthodox basically is the um, Catholic Church. That's the foundation church, the Catholic Church. Of course, every other church you have, you know, broke away from Catholic Church. They are all Protestants, Anglican, you know, Methodist, Baptist, name them, including the other group again that broke away from the various uh, sects. You have the, uh, you now are called the Pentecostals, the Pentecostals. So everybody is a Protestant and everybody, we're, we're all the same. We're all one family. Once we are proclaiming the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we say we have an old nature, we are all born into an old nature until we get born again. We become, you know, it's when you get born again that you join into, you are joined into the Christ's family, the Christian family. For instance, like I said, in our old nature, we don't really bother about whatever we are prepared if i mean we are prepared to hurt people we are even pre I mean, prepared to kill because human heart is very hard you remember how uh Cain decided to kill abel you know and that is how wicked man's heart can be now you remember what Jacob did to uh, Esau, you know, taking his birthright because we are ready to take advantage of other people. We are even ready to manipulate, to get to positions or to make money. What is the problem with our youth today? They are eager to make money quickly and then they go into Yahoo, Yahoo, internet fraud, they go into kidnapping, they go into all sorts of vices. 
you know, just to make money. Then uh, the next thing we can do, some of the things we are easily doing, <laughs> we can go, we can be doing the drugs, the alcoholic, the sexual maniacs, the a thief, it will be an armed robber. Uh, we don't, we wouldn't see anything wrong with lying, telling lies. Uh, we see, just as we are seeing, we see what belongs to all as belonging to us alone. For instance, when you are placed in a position of authority, you use it to benefit yourself, not serving the people. We don't even account, we don't even believe that we are accountable to anybody. <coughs> we also believe, excuse me, we believe that whatever we are doing, it is our power that gives them to us, and so on and so forth. That's the old nature of man. But the moment we become a Christian, the Bible says, behold, all things have passed away. We are now new creatures. So, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, apologies for the short break. As I did say, we are born into Adamic nature. But when we become, when we are now growing up, and our parents begin to orientate us, it's then we know that we're a Muslim family, a Christian family, or whatever. But even within the Christian family, we now know where we belong. We belong to either Pentecostal, Orthodox, or the Protestants, whatever. But now, when we are even doing that, uh, when we are in Christ, that old nature that we are born with, wicked nature, or the legal, like we have uh, <laughs> the laws, the legal, the tit for tat nature that we had, first of all, has to give way to, they all have to give way to a new nature. As I've given examples of what our old nature is, and I believe you understand that. If you're a Christian, you'll also understand better that if you are truly, genuinely born again, you will say, you will know that there must be a difference in the life that you were living before. And and then when I, when you now become a Christian, first of all, there are some things that you were not used to, that you will now begin to do. For instance, reading the word of God so that you can have knowledge about the God that you are serving, the Christ that you are serving. According to Hosea 4, 6, that says, my people perish from lack of knowledge. You don't want to perish. You want to know this God. And you become you become to you, you become interested in studying the word of god such that it's now food to you for instance what we are doing now is we are taking our breakfast spiritual breakfast any day i wake up and i've not done this devotional thing i feel incomplete i feel that i've some people are you know missing out something so until I have circulated it, I'm not at peace with myself. I like to reach out to people so that they can be guided according to the will of God. So previously, when I was much younger, I wasn't a Bible reader, reader as I'm doing now, top layers of understanding it as it is. But gradually, <coughs> as I move closer to God, I began to be interested. And since I've been researching the Bible myself, I have discovered so many truths that were hitherto hidden 
or manipulated, but which the Bible is very clear about. I've been talking about some of them in my past recordings. Um, because what has happened is that even not everyone in the church, not even our leaders, you know, um, completely put away the human nature, the old nature in us. Even in Christ, we still use the position that we are as leaders of in the church of God to still make life unbearable for other people. Some of us, even though we are in Christ, some of us still influence our children's um, results, maybe wife, and so on and so forth. Some of us, we don't want to be patient enough for a child to take time out to study and do the will of God. We want to wear sometimes sinfulness is convenient for us because we want something we'll put christ aside our market women for instance look at the level of exploitation that is going on so and yet we are even leaders in our churches leaders of one group or the other some of us even to today we still believe that you know uh, we can curse people, whereas our new nature does not permit that. Our new nature does not permit us to steal, to kill, to destroy, to commit adultery, to be alcoholic, and all those things. Our new nature, as we've heard from the Word of God, is humility. <coughs> it is demonstrating love for one another. It is demonstrating love for God. That is Matthew 22. Uh, verse 37 to uh, 39. We don't need to forget this very, I, I repeat it often. You can see how relevant it is. When you love your God and you love your neighbor as yourself, honestly speaking, you have fulfilled all the laws, both in the Old and the New Testament. Yes. Once you identify with Christ and then you now love your God, you want to know more about him, you want to do his biddings, you want to follow him, whatever he tells you through his word, you are believing. And even you are seeing our prophets, uh, our pastors and so on and so forth, even though you believe in them, but at the same time you check, you test what they are telling, you check it against the word of God. And once whatever is happening, no matter who's, how, no matter how highly placed a priest or pastor or geo may be, if whatever he teaches you contradicts what the Bible says, what you do is you stick to that which the Bible says because God himself exalts his word above his name. Because that written word is coded and you cannot alter it. No matter how much you try. Try it, you do it at your own detriment. May we not be disadvantaged in the mighty name of Jesus. So, it is very important that we know the new nature. If, let's look at it. You go to a church or even on Facebook you see some prayers about enemies. The book of um, Proverbs is it Proverbs? Yeah, Proverbs 24. As far back as then, the Bible says we should not gloat at the fall of our enemy. That is, we should not rejoice. Maybe we have misunderstanding with somebody and something calamitous then happened to him or her. Hey, hallelujah, they got the victory. God, God has caught up with him. And he's, he's getting the reward for his uh, wickedness and so on. It does not lie in our mouth. The Bible says we should not gloat at the fall of our enemies. You know, that even God says there, it becomes something else. When God says, if you do that, you've offended God. You know why? Whatever is happening to every person does not happen outside the knowledge of God. Does not happen outside the permission of God. 
and you now personalizing it, thinking that because the person had offended you, that's why he's having that punishment. <laughs> you, you mistake, you've offended God. So that's why, judge not. So Jesus said, judge not so that you will not be judged. So we need to be very careful when we see somebody whom we perceive. It may not even be real. We may just perceive the person as our enemy. The fact that somebody opposes you and so on and so forth does not mean that you should be looking for his downfall. So like I said, we need to know the, this new nature. This new nature does not allow you to rejoice when your enemy dies. You sympathize. You do everything. Or maybe the business of your enemy collapses. It's not for you to, to be fighting or to be saying that, hey, I will not take advantage. Christians don't take advantage of other people. They don't manipulate people. I said the, the local market women, you know, they have different measures. They, 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 they measure by we, with which they buy. When I was, who was selling Gary, I understand that. They have their own special combo, special measure. Then they have another measure with which they sell. Of course, the measure with which they sell is lower than what they bought. Maybe they bought a Congo for 100 naira. What the, the measure with which they are selling can contain, no matter how much you press it, may be just six, between 70 to 80 naira. So it's already making a gain of 20 to 80. Apart from the fact that the price, it, it will buy it so cheaply from the farmer, and then when selling it to the uh, end, end, end consumer, you will discover that the price is over-inflated, and God hates a false scale, measuring with a false scale. So, but all these things with real Christians, you see, the, even we have, well, the problem with us is that we have the problem of putting Christ aside when it gets to commercial things. Or maybe we want to satisfy our sexual desire, we we'll put Christ aside. We can go for any woman, the men. The woman can go for any man, any man. So we are enjoying life. Well, it seems to be an enjoyment, but deep down, there is something serious that is an old nature that is still in us, if we are still in that. Yes, all of us pass through that stage. That's where we are talking of old nature. Everybody has an old nature. But the moment you now come into Christ, those old nature must give way for new nature. And then loving our neighbors as ourselves, Matthew 23, 23, and Luke 11, 41, read together, saying the same thing, that we need to love, do justice to one another. It should not be a selfish, an old nature is self, self-centered, but a new nature is selfless. You love your neighbor as yourself. The buyer is considering the pocket of the seller. And the seller is considering the pocket of the buyer. You know, everybody wants to make godly gain that will, okay, but when you have, still come to your old nature, you can you always put that aside. When it gets to line, the same thing. So, just it co- just covers all forms of sins. But the difference between the old nature and the new nature is that love dominates. God is love, and you know, for God so love the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. John three sixteen. And then, um, yes, we go to church. Now that we are Christian families, but do our deeds reflect that we are children of God? When we put God aside, when it gets to profiteering, when we put God aside, when it gets to cursing others, any church where you go and the prayers are centered around enemies, 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 <laughs> be careful. What the Bible says, Jesus himself said it. What was said in Proverbs 24, it said, do not gloat at the fall of your enemies. But today, directly we are praying that God should kill our enemies. We will be walking on the ground, we look for the picture of whoever we perceive as our enemy. We go and nail it, we go and throw it under the table, go and, you know. In the church of God, when Jesus himself says, pray for your enemies. 
when they are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. I think the only way you can run away from your enemy is if it is a physical thing that you know they want to battle you and then you have to save your life and then run away. Or you I mean or maybe if you are then caught on awares and it's obvious that this person wants to kill you, you can do every other thing to defend yourself. That is just to protect yourself. Outside that, you have no license to be talking or retaliating against enemies. Oh, every enemy that is blocking your way, when you yourself may be counting your enemies, may be the enemy because you fail to do what you are supposed to do. A lazy person that is saying that uh, any, every enemy that is blocking my, my way to success. Which way to success? Hard work is the way to success and prayerfulness. But you are not doing that. You stay on your bed and you are cursing, you are cursing those who are doing their own work. Invis excuse me, invisible enemies. You are undoing yourself. You are praying a miss. <laughs> excuse me. God does not answer such prayers. Bible says, let him, let him who still stop stealing, labor with his hands so that he can take care of his own hand, take good care of others. At the same time, say, let him that is lazy, forget about laziness, go and work so that he can take good care of himself. God is ready to do what? To bless all the work of our hands, Deuteronomy 28, 10 to 14. The, if we will obey, that is the first one. If you will obey and do according to the word of God, since blessed will you be when you are at home, blessed be your uh, family, blessed be everything you lay your hands upon and so on and so forth. So that I will send my rings at the right time. But are we following those things? May the Lord have mercy upon us. So our new nature is supposed to be humble, not arrogant. Supposed to see the truth and talk about the truth, not minding who is being corrected. Jesus did it. He had to flog out the rabbis from the church when they turned the church of God. To a bazaar, and he said, This house, the house of my father, is because they are called the house of prayer. The primary purpose of church is to pray, not against enemies, but for enemies and even for ourselves. The Lord will be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is very important that we follow this thing. Now, and your charity has to begin from home. Start to take good care of your parents, take good care of your larger family, your children your siblings, everybody. Even by the time God is multiplying your blessings, then you can begin to bless the larger society. And, you know, you as, as a Christian, you have a corporate vision for your family now, for everybody. You know, you, you are eager to contribute to the development of others. This is very important. So we need to understand all these things so that, you know, we'll be thinking all right. When they are praying about the enemy, you concentrate. That's why I say, let me tell you one thing about all these our churches and all these prayer points that they give to us. The, many of these uh, uh, prayer points, they are fabricated by guests, by guessing that, you know, people will, because they know that we like to hear such. So we now sit down, you know, Concentrate on praying the evil prayers. It's not even an it's not a good prayer at all. It's an evil prayer. When you are praying against your enemies, Christ hates it. Even Christ made it clear to when you are praying for your enemies, what you are doing is you are wishing them well. And whatever they in turn wishes you or wish you is what will come to them. So what you are wishing them will come back to you. What you are wishing they are wishing you will go back to them. And he said it's like